Let's continue our conversation on Stoicism, going over the moral letters by Seneca. We have landed in letter 43, which is a fairly short one, so I'll, I'll read it in its entirety. From Seneca to Lucilia's greetings. How did I find out, you ask, who told me of your intention, seeing that you hadn't told anyone yourself? The one who knows most things. Gossip. You say... Since when am I of sufficient stature to attract gossip? Don't measure yourself in relation to this locality, but in relation to your own place of residence. Anything that stands out in its own surroundings is of stature there. Eminence is not of any one size. Comparison raises or lowers it in one's estimation. A boat that is large on a river is quite a tiny vessel out at sea, and the same steering oar is big for one boat but small for another. Since you are now in your province, you are a great man, no matter how little regard you have for yourself. Your activities, your dinner plans, even your sleeping arrangements are matters of interest and indeed of common knowledge. Hence, you must be all the more careful of your mode of life. Count yourself fortunate <clears throat> excuse me, when you are able to live in a manner open to the public, when walls are there for shelter, not for concealment. For as a rule, we think we have walls around us not to protect us, but to afford greater privacy to our misdeeds. I will tell you the measure of our degeneracy. You'll find hardly anyone who can live with his door open. It is not ostentation that puts a doorman in the vestibule, it's our guilt. The way we live, an unannounced visit means getting caught. But what's the use of hiding oneself away from sight, from hearing? A good conscience welcomes a crowd, a bad one is racked with anxiety even in solitude. If your actions are honourable, let everyone know them. If shameful, what does it matter that nobody knows? You know. Alas for you, if you have no concern for that witness. Farewell. A very interesting letter, I think, dealing with gossip, which is a fascinating topic because it is certainly... Uh, something that happens today and was already uh, an issue uh, in the time of Seneca, uh, who died uh, 65 uh, AD. So, in other words, getting up to 2,000 years later, uh, this was, it's still as, as much an issue now as it was then, which, which I find fascinating, and that, to me, remains one of the very interesting aspects of reading the letters of Seneca. They are so legible. Um, they're very legible because they're translated into English, obviously. But I mean, beyond that, the, the, the kind of issues that he describes are still very timely. And certainly, there isn't a whole lot of glad... glad I can't say it. Gladiatorial combat. There we go. Um, these days. But, but of course, you can you can change out that to sports events, etc. And, and, and you're there again. So it's fascinating that that has um, stood time so well. Anyway, I find it very interesting what he says here. Two things stand out to me. One is, at some point, you may develop a certain level of stature, and as a result you will start to become the target of gossip. And that's very interesting. Now, I think everyone in, in one way or another, one context or another, has been the subject of gossip because it's, it's the way humans work. I think we have really evolved to be a very social species, but one of the downsides to that is that we also are attracted to gossipy things, right? Because that in a way that that creates social cohesion even though we may not want that specific type of cohesion but it, it creates that it, cre it creates that that mentality of you're, you're part of a group unfortunately typically that also means that you exclude members who are not part of your group anyway when you discuss a topic like this in the context of, of Stoicism, I think one important question is then how do you deal with this? How do you deal with something like gossip? And I think we have 
a couple of times in in past videos gone over similar uh, questions right how, how do you deal with it well you you accept first and foremost that there are certain things within your control and other things not within your control <clears throat> but I think it's too easy to say well whatever whatever anyone says about me that's just not within my control to a degree that is true to a certain extent that is absolutely true you you can't fully control what other people say about you however and i think that's the very interesting second point that that seneca makes however if your behavior is beyond reproach at least most of the time because everybody does something once in a while or says something they wish they hadn't done it i think that's that's human nature as well but if most of the time your behavior is beyond reproach, then what is there to gossip about? And if gossip then starts, then you know full well that it cannot be true because you know that you have not done the things that you're accused of doing. And that, I think, is a very powerful illustration of the concept of virtue, which figures so largely in certain, several, I should say, um, schools of ancient philosophy and definitely features quite heavily in stoicism very heavily in stoicism in fact because by being virtuous <clears throat> excuse me by doing the right thing what bad things can happen typically bad things do not come from doing the right thing correct typically bad things come from doing the wrong thing, doing something that is bad, that you may know is bad, but you do it anyway, and then the trouble starts, and then people will speak, etc. Now, of course, there are absolutely situations thinkable where you do something well, but people complain about it anyway, or people dislike what you're doing, or people, you know, may have it in for you, or, or whatever. Um, but that, I think, is a slightly different situation, because there too, if it is true, and of course then it has to be true, but if it is true that you are doing the right thing and people still gossip or complain about you, then you know that they don't really have a ground to do so. And you know that what you are doing is the right thing. So there is really nothing for them to complain about and therefore their complaints or their gossip must be false. That is not to say that that does not then upset you or maybe hurt you but this again ties into another stoic principle of if what they're saying about you is right well then you probably shouldn't be upset because what people are saying is correct if what people are saying is wrong then you probably shouldn't be upset because you know that what they're saying is wrong right Right. So that, I think, is an important man manner, matter. Sorry, it's an important matter and an important manner of conducting yourself by doing the right thing, by consistently doing the right thing. You show the world what you are made of, at least by trying as hard as you can to do the right thing most of the time and then whatever is said well that is then said but you know what you have and have not done that's what I had I thought it was a very interesting letter a short letter to the point letter but an interesting letter and um, yeah an interesting thing to to think about so what do you think? Let me know what your thoughts are on this particular letter and on the, the, the concept of, of gossip, being on the receiving end of it, thinking about it and dealing about it and dealing with it. Sorry, how do you deal with that if it happens to you? It's, I think, an interesting thing to think about because it, it affects us in one way or another. At some point, you, you're subject to this. It's, it's almost unavoidable. So how do you deal with that? I'd be interesting to read that, and I think so are other people. There you have it. That was this letter. I'll see you again next week.
more talk about stoicism. Thanks for watching. Bye.